Over here with the champion TJ Tahani, how are you? How you feeling? Yeah, pulled up okay. Got a got a couple of scratches on me, but I'm just happy to get the win and get my first title defense out of the way. Came up against a very awkward operator, so it was very hard to look good against a style like that. But um, the main thing is we got the win, we got the stoppage, and we move on. Yeah, definitely. I say you know, you you definitely put you know a great you know show in your fight. Even though you know you, you mentioned the stretches and everything, but I think it's part of you know the boxing you know thing. And I see that you are a very skillful fighter. Um, how do you you know pick it up the, the style like? Yeah, I am. I, I kind of mix it up. It depends on the opponent. You know, I'm a very versatile fighter. I can I can go on the front foot, the back foot, whatever way they want that I can give it to them. Like you know, but um, it's just, it's hard to figure out a guy like that who's quite negative and was punching and dipping down. He was getting into some really safe spots. And it makes for a sloppy fight. But um, we figured him out and I was able to land it on the I think my I think my power prevailed at the end. I was nailing him with some really hard shots and it took its toll towards the end of the fight. I think that's where the referee stopped it. It did look like a it looked like a it looked like a, a bit of a soft stoppage. But um, I think I think looking back on it now kid was taking a lot of punishment he had no chance of winning so the referee did the job you know that kid's got to go home so yeah I mean you know. for the safety of the boxers and exactly. I always say you know even for the losers or who I mean not the loser but who you know I'm correcting that for whoever loses a fight you know we got to have a respect because hey you know you don't want to get the other guy you know so injured that God exactly. forbid something and, happened and yeah you know you see a lot of fans like oh, complain about it sometimes but at the end of the day they're there for your entertainment, but they're not there. To, you know, they want to go home to their family. They want. They Thank want to. They have to go and train again. You know, they need to make more money. They, they live to fight another day. They don't want to be sitting in the hospital all night. You know. Exactly. So, I think the referee did a great job, and um, hats off to Takahashi. He really did come and he he he, um, he put in a good effort because that was his world title opportunity. You know, and uh, he had a great fight. He's a big heart because I've got some good power, and I really think that. Um, I was hurting him early and he just, he just kept coming, you know, because he just got that warrior spirit the Japanese fighters have. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the way that we sometimes we see it in the movies, they, they warriors too. And But eventually, you know, that was your night. Successfully, you defended the title once, you know, again over here in, in New York. And what was it for you to come over here in New York, you know? Um, well, I got it. I signed a deal with Matchroom Promotions, so um, they're working alongside the design platform at the minute. So it was just it was fitting because I I travelled from Australia to do my training camps in um, Boston uh, with Hector Bermudez. Okay. So um, yeah, we're on this side of the world, so why not fight in the US while we're here training? You know, just um, less travelling and everything. But um, I'm happy now to get get my first defence at Madison Square Garden. That's two world title fights in two of the most iconic stadiums in the world. We've got the Korakuen Hall in Japan, Madison Square Garden, and I'm looking forward to see what Eddie has next for me. It's looking like it's going to be the Danny Roman unification, so I'm looking forward to seeing where the venue's going to be. Well, that's a, you know, a tremendous fight, because uh, I know you, you have one title in your hands. Yeah. He has another one, so that's a unification right there. Yeah. What do you think of, you know, like, that? I mean, you mentioned, you know, hopefully that they they do that fight over here or I don't know where it could be yeah I think uh, it's looking like it might be on the west coast so um, Danny's a great fighter he's very compact does, uh, does everything really well you know and I think it's going to make for a great fight between me and him and I think it's going to I have a feeling it's going to turn into a war and it's one that the fans are really going to enjoy and I'm really excited for it these are the kind of fights I've been waiting for my whole career you know yeah, and eventually, you know, you want to pursue, you know, the greatness and, you know, I I think more unification of titles if, he, you know, the opportunity comes. Yeah. Talking about greatness, this Mikey Garcia, you know, has a challenge to or in order to fight Errol Spence. Uh -huh. What do you think of that fight? You know, do you think that Mikey Garcia has the potential in order to be Spence yeah. Jr.? Um, Mikey is probably... In my top three favorite fighters right now, I really, I really love the way he works. He's just so clinical in everything he does. He's just like the perfect boxer, you know. And um, he's coming up against Errol Spence. Everybody's writing him off because of size and this and that. And the other, the other fighters have done it. They've moved up through the division, so 
got to sit down and look at the skills. It's 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 fifty fifty fight for me, you know. The only thing like Spence has um, Spence has got some size on him. Um, he's, he's he's taller, he's bigger, yeah, but. That's not going to be a factor in the fight, I don't think, because Mike is such an intelligent fighter, I think he'll be able to deal with anything that, he, that goes up against him, and I'm really excited to see that fight. No, it's, it's, you know, a tremendous, I think it's a tremendous fight, because for the, both of them career, because I, I think, in my opinion, if he, let's say an example, right, if he Mikey loses, I'm not saying that he's going to lose, but, you know, he has nothing to lose, because I guess that's a good thing for his resume. But if he wins, he will shock the world. Oh, that's it. He's, he goes down as one of the greatest, doesn't he? He's after coming up through the through the divisions from uh, I think one one twenty six. And then he, yeah, and then all, he all the I, and then he started moving up, you know, from weight class to another class. And he's a great fighter. And he's was such a such a humble guy, you know. I, just, I even love him just watching his interviews. And stuff, you know, I'm a big fan of Mike. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him fight again. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of, you know, this this fight, nobody wants to miss that because we want to see what's going to happen, exactly. you know. And this is what boxing's all about, you know. Mikey feels like he can beat him. Errol Spence feels like he can beat Mikey. Get it on, get the fights on, get the fans on. They want. That's what boxing's all about, you know. Fighters sitting around calling themselves businessmen and entertainers and all this. We're fighters. Get in and fight, you know. If, if the opportunity's there, why not take it, you know. Yeah, well, I respect Mikey for that. I agree with you. You know, we gotta give it. You know, two thumbs up, Mikey, because he's doing something that he's he actually spoke. You know, earlier. You know, in other press conference, he said he wants to do greatness, and he's pursuing that's it. it. That's it, that's it. He's, he wants. He's striving for greatness. He wants to get his name cemented as one of the greatest of all time. And more power to him. And um, I, I, I think I'll be cheering on Mikey in that fight. I say, you know, that it's a tremendous fight that I think, you know, this is a great for the sports.